16th Merlin Select Board meeting to order. Um, with us tonight are Justin Lawrence, my far left, Flo Smith, my right, Jeremy Hansen, and Angelina Capron is on the phone with us. Also with us is Nina Hadley and Diane Isabel, the town treasurer. Um, additions or changes to the agenda, Dean? Yes, I have uh, three additions I'd like to make. I'd like to discuss um, the project for downstreet housing. Um, I need to give you the ordinance that you approved at the last meeting for signatures. This is the wastewater ordinance. And I also would like to add um, the budget approval on this agenda. Okay, um, public comment. Hearing none, uh, treasurer's report then. Okay. I have given the December trial balance, budget status report, and delinquent um, tax report to the select board, so they should have that. Um, also, I have a few parcels that are under $5 that I would like to write off the balance. I have eight parcels for a total of $6.86. Mm -hmm. If I can get approved, I will get those. What was the amount? Six dollars and eighty-six cents for eight. Most of them are like thirty cents. Okay. So, and uh, these sorry. are ones that people just either they transpose their number, or they might have uh, it might have crossed in the mail as far as when they paid the late fee and I sent out the new one. These are, like I said, very small amounts. So you're looking for a motion. So I, I move yeah. that we write up the balance for those tax bills in the total amount of six dollars and eighty-six cents. And I second motion. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries. Uh. And that's, that's all I've got for now. I know there's something else that we're going to discuss later with the fire department. We'll yep. Um, since we haven't reviewed the financials yet, uh, Dennis Chambers, dog issue, Dana? Yes, um, Dennis, that's you? No, no, no. no. It's not <laughs> it's This is the PEX? Okay. Yes. All right. Um, we've had Mr. Chambers asked to come to the board to discuss the ordinance for the dog, the uh, animal ordinance. And since he's not here, I really can't speak for him, but um, there's been um, some instances down there with his complaint, complaining about barking dogs, dogs running in his yard, um, and I guess that's that's it. Well, there was a couple earlier about defecating. Okay. Um, so, since he's not here, I don't know, you know, what to do. To, I guess. Well, Chad, what's the overall complaint? Uh, I I believe it's. It was pretty much daily, and um, he he's complaining now mainly about the constant barking of the dogs inside of the Pax residence, and that it's disturbing his well-being and driving himself and his girlfriend to have you know emotional problems. So that's after about a year or so. That's what it's come down to. Can you refresh my memory of the, of the dog ordinance. There is a in the dog ordinance. There is a phrase about. Basically, it refers to it as a public nuisance. Article number five. Yeah. Right. Here comes Mr. Chambers now. No, okay. okay. All right. Now, did you issue a, a ticket? I did issue the tax a ticket last week, yeah. week before. Okay. Was that for barking dogs? Or? That was for the barking dogs. Okay. Did you hear it? Um, he oh. has everything recorded, and I provided the town admin with the USB drive with all the recordings. Did 
Is that resolved now? No, Hail still Rogan. keeps calling. I mean, is the dog still barking? No, the dogs. He said our the dogs. The dogs were bark at strangers. The dogs bark at deer across the river. Mm -hmm. The dogs do not bark over five minutes. We bring them right back inside. They are in a pen in our yard, and we have asked the landlord repeatedly, can we please put a privacy fence between us and Dennis? Mm -hmm. Still has not been resolved. So I have pictures of my backyard, and you can see <clears throat> that the houses, the trailers, are very close. I also have a letter from our other close neighbor. I have a question for Chad. Yeah. So, so this is a uh, this is a citation for violation of this municipal ordinance, right? It's a uh, municipal ticket. ticket. A municipal ticket. ticket. Okay, municipal ticket. It's now with the uh, with Vermont Judiciary. It's handled through that process. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, if they want to uh, make a, they want to fight it, I believe the ordinance in the back of it says that um, this is the step that they have okay. to go that, through. That was, that was what I was asking. So, and you guys will decide whatever you seem fit. Yeah, the procedures of the appeal are on the left. But the day he issued his ticket, he said our dogs were out there at 4 o'clock in the morning barking at 4 o'clock for a long period of time. Our weenie him out of bed at 4 o'clock in the morning. Our dogs were hanging outside. That's my dog was in his kennel and the other one was in his kennel. Do you have um, timestamps on those, re those recordings? I believe they're, they're pretty much our, our timestamp, yes. And they also have the pictures of the dogs on the property. So, long story short, um, we were contracted with Barry City for a while, so we were just letting Barry City deal with it, and unfortunately, they weren't dealing with it. So I guess Barry City um, subcontracted with Random Rescue, and she can't issue tickets, but she did a home visit and talked to both, I believe, and nothing got resolved that way. So we went to. Um, put the couple other officers put the uh, situation through the Montpelier Community Justice, and after a couple months, they turned it down. But I believe they did call Mr. Chambers and talk to him. I don't know if they called Mr. We got a letter in the mail from yep. a mediator, and we were not sure if both parties would go to the meeting. We talked to the lady. We told them that. <clears throat> so long story short, all these instances still kept them going and nothing was going on. So I contacted the landlord and after contacting the community justice program, I think everything was through in probably late December um, and nobody did anything about anything. So he, Mr. Chambers provided all the audio recordings and the pictures, mm -hmm. therefore I issued the ticket based on a statement that he, uh, Mr. Chambers, issued and the recordings. And this is going through the new ordinance? This is, no, this is an existing ordinance that we've had on the books for... I mean, through the... Uh, Judicial Bureau. The ju Judicial Bureau for the ticket, yes. Oh, yeah. But this is a different procedure because our ordinance has, has a different procedure. Right. One of those things that we probably... That's we, something we, is on the... We may amend to go to the more... We, we need to amend on many of our ordinances, actually. And you could prevail in this matter, too. You can say... You can you can void the, void the complaint or you can uphold it as if this is what this is for. Mm -hmm. May I speak? Sure. I work for them, so I'm at the house quite a bit during the day, taking care of uh, Tina's handicapped child. I work for Washington County Mental Health. Mm -hmm. And this has been going on for about two years. 
And first of all, I, no disrespect to Mr. Chambers, but his girlfriend doesn't even live there. She comes down once in a while. I'm there every day. And I let the dogs out. They go out, they're out maybe 15, 20 minutes. They come in and yes, they do bark once in a while in their house. And if someone comes to their house, they're going to bark. I think it was Thursday, Mr. Chambers is out banging by the trailer. They're gonna start barking. Someone's by their home. She goes out to do a bus run. They have to put one dog in the kennel because the other one likes to instigate. And he's saying they can hear it through their, house, their home to their home with the windows closed and everything. And he's got cameras pointing at the house. Now there were two other dogs in the park from the part lows that run around loose and defecate on his property. And, and it's not just him, but they go after this, this person. I've never seen a person get phone calls on them so much in my whole, when the whole park was full and we had cops down there all the time. These guys are getting it called on them at least two or three times a week, if not four or five times or more a month for these, for her dogs. It's getting to where you're afraid to even let them out to go to the bathroom because you're gonna get a call on them. And when they call the, and he's supposed to go to the landlord by the lease. He's supposed to go to them for mediation. And instead, he's not going to the landlord. He's calling the cops all the time. And now we're standing in front of you. He has another incident. Another incident is her disabled son rides a lawnmower. The one thing he does in the summertime is rides a tractor lawnmower around. He calls the cops on him. The cops we're, we're come down. We're talking dogs. Right, yeah. dogs. but this is ongoing lawnmowers. and it's called harassment. Yeah. May I have your name, please? Stacy Frazier. Thank you. What you have to understand is we can hear the dogs inside his home with the TV on. The trailers are extremely close together. Mm -hmm. So number one, that is a problem. And but when you also have three dogs in a trailer that is so close to someone else, it sounds like the dogs are literally in the living room with us when the TV is on. You can hear it over the TV. And so when the dogs you two are, are the only two at the end of the park. I actually was respectful to you when you spoke. That's true. I'm sorry for Thank being you. Late. How come my neighbor up the road does not, is not, it, it says the same, that they your are neighbor the is up the road. Can you address your comments to the board, please? Your yes, neighbor please. is up the road, not right next door, and where you let um, the dogs out is also on the side that's closest to him. The, Chad, were, were the dogs able to be heard on the audio? Yes. And do you know where they were recorded? Well, I wasn't there when they recorded. Top of the head, he was in his house. But he did um, end up getting a camera because we spoke about needing proof of which dog was in on his property because other um, owners have been issued um, warnings as the first step and provided the ordinance. And he did get a camera. It's not pointing at the house. It's just pointing at his driveway. And he provided, and that is date stamp, he provided pictures of the dash island being on his property and the beetle beagle 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 being on the property when they probably yeah. run out of the house and some comes uh mr chambers yes have you gone to the uh your landlord uh, i can't even give you a number many many times whether it has been through phone call uh messages left uh several several emails sent and i have gotten one call from him, um, and I wouldn't even necessarily say that it was necessarily just so, solely for the dogs. It was a couple of other things that was also talked about, um, but the one phone call. He also tried to get them evicted two years ago, and that, that case was dropped for the same thing. Not trying to get anybody evicted. Um, Sir, he's not trying to get anybody evicted. He's trying to have peace and quiet in his own home so he can rest and relax. I disagree okay, with that, so sir. That, that, I don't mean to be rude, can, but there is can, only can two trailers at the end of the park. <laughs> yeah. And it's theirs and his. Otherwise, everybody else has this huge space of land because 
there's only like 12 trailers left. So when you get down to where they are, it's her and him, and then there's like no trailers yeah. at all. Well, he wants that corner all to himself. So he's got to get rid of them. Uh, we're doing speculation, not in fact here. Mm -hmm. um, the So, Chad, you said that the, the you could hear the dogs barking from his audio. From his audio, yes. Well, I'd be, I don't know how the board feels, but I feel like we should just let this go through the system. Mm -hmm. I, I just have a question. Um, is the dog a service animal or emotional support animal? Yes. It is. Is it established? Does your doctor have a letter establishing your dog is a support animal? He does, and I haven't picked it up yet. I was on the I phone this afternoon with I, the counsel. I'm, I'm looking at the law right now, and I believe you're protected. Oh, so, but, uh, they are is, protected. But there's but there's three dogs, right? Yeah. Okay. Well, they'll have a chance to they'll have a chance to um, go in front of the judge on this one. Hearing officer, yes. Yeah, hearing officer. Hearing officer. Mm -hmm. And so I'm again. I'm more inclined. I don't know how the rest of the board feels, but I'm more inclined to just let it go. Do they automatically go to mediation? Well, not me. Or, no. Community justice program turned it down, so he would have to check off the night on the back of his, his uh, ticket, mail it in within 20 days to, get, already to, already to, get, it to, to get a court hearing, yeah. and then a court hearing <coughs> would be um, would be uh, yeah. set forth, and usually. Um, the town lawyer or somebody comes with us mm -hmm. for our municipal ordinances. Mm -hmm. Again, I'm, I'd say there's you know, a similar process will play out at the court hearing. The, the PECs will have the chance to present their side, Mr. Chambers will have his chance, and the hearing officer will ultimately make a decision. And they'll, they'll also hear from the town, but with basically, if the hearing officer has a copy of the the animal control order, certified copy of the animal control order, that's what he's going to rely on probably to make this decision. Yeah. Well, again, I'm more inclined to let it go, and I mean, I don't feel right second guessing Chad's. Right. I concur with that. I mean, he was there. Right. Right. So right. He made that decision. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I guess we'll have to go along. We should probably have a, have a motion. <coughs> Resource is uh, Vermont Statutes Online. You can um, go ahead and look up the laws yourself, and uh, what, what, this might be helpful for you. What's the section, Angelina, that you're looking at? I'm not looking at this section at the moment, but let me see. Hold on a second. But but this is something that presumably that the hearing officer is going to be able to reconcile with. And I'm, I don't. I know that. Right, I looked at number uh, 166, volume 32, number 2. Title. So can you can you tell me, so, so what VSA? Title 32? 32 VSA, and what was the 166? Volume 32, number 2. 166. 166, and then volume 32, number 2. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm offline. Oh. <laughs> new, new computer not set up right now, okay. And just to say, the hearing officer will decide if a violation occurred on that day, if he agreed with Mr. Chambers or Mr. Peck, but he's not, they're not going to stop the complaints from coming in and more tickets being issued. Um, so I think that's more of what they're here for, and Mr. Chambers is here for, is to get a resolution to how to come to grasp with the barking dogs. Does that make sense? The hearing officer is just going to say yes, he violated section 5 of the uh, <coughs> ordinance, but that's that, and you'll have to pay the $50 ticket or not pay it. But that's not going to stop or resolve the issue that's going on down there with the barking dogs. And I think that's, correct me if I'm wrong, that's more likely why you're up here. 
Absolutely. But I'm not sure that we have a role you or have, responsibility to remove animals. You, or, you have the authority, however, that's a long way down the kicking the can down the road. I mean, I, I think you have limited scope in what you can do. What you can encourage the two parties to do is maybe I would suggest getting the landlord more involved because it appears that he's not being involved. And I mean, it's it's a difficult situation because the houses, the homes are in such close proximity. Yeah. And the pets are pet owners, and you know they're entitled to have a pet. But the problem is the pets can't violate. The animal control ordinance, and I mean, even if it's a service dog, serv uh, they're not service dogs are permitted pretty much anywhere. But I still think they're not really permitted to violate an animal control ordinance. Thanks. With, so, with the noise, <laughs> going through this, Mr. 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 Chambers, if, if there was a part like a, a, a privacy fence in, in between there, would you have any object? Would you have an objection to that between you and your neighbors? I would have no objection to that. I'm not sure that is going to solve the problem, but it, I mean. That in itself being up, I would not have a problem with. But, but it may, I mean, it, if it was a, a wooden fence, it could conceivably dampen the noise a bit if, you know, when it's when they're in the house, if they're barking. Yeah, and I've asked the landlord about putting in a privacy fence, and he told me he was supposed to come down on a certain day, and he never showed up. So I, I, think, I think the select board can certainly take a role and encourage the landlord to become more more involved and help resolve this because if the fence can go up and that can quiet things down on your side and doesn't require you to you know make other arrangements with your dogs I mean that that could be who is the landlord Randy Rulo <laughs> <laughs> no matter what he goes under which is Har LLC it's still Randy Rulo well, the dogs are registered. Mm -hmm. I'll have to take and give Randy a call. Okay. Would you? Yes. That would be wonderful. Yeah. So I think we should, because this is part of a legitimate hearing, I think um, we have a motion. So I'm going to move that we that we uphold the, the ticket that um, Sergeant Bissett issued. And I second that motion. Any further discussion? Hearing none, those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you very much for coming in. Thank you. Thank you all. <clears throat> Have a good evening and drive mm -hmm. carefully up there. Yeah, Thank too. you also. They're all registered too, of course, right? Yeah. Keith, come on up. So they are. So that would be an interesting thing. Yes. Get some sleep. Hello again. How are you doing? Hello. So our visit this time is uh, in regards to the um, replacement of one of our engines and. Uh, this is the one we talked about for requesting the bond vote. So I have some paperwork that I can pass around right here. There's two pages. <coughs> I think everybody knows by now, but congratulations are in order. Oh, Thank you. Yes. yes. Congratulations. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. So what we've done since we last met is we um, met as a uh, apparatus committee and created a, not a full specification, but a punch list for what we'd like to see in the replacement engine. And we sent that out to five apparatus manufacturers. I heard back from four of them. And the... Um, Results of those estimates are right there on the top of the page. Uh, the four back were Toyne, Lakes Region, New England Fire Equipment and Apparatus, which is in Connecticut, and DeSourcy Emergency Products, which is in uh, St. Albans. Um, 
<clears throat> they ranged from a low of 548000 to up to the top end of 600000 for the toy. We're using the 580 instead of 600 for the for that top end right there. One of the things I got back from all those apparatus manufacturers, however, was um, what we're used to is is 20-year-old technology as far as scene lighting. And they basically told me, hey, look, you can do a lot more with LED technology nowadays than what you're used to. The generator that you believe you need on the truck, if you're only using it for scene lighting, you don't really need it. So what else would we use it for? Um, the only other use for that generator would be if we need to generate 120 volt power for portable equipment, um, heavier duty fans, power tools, so on and so forth. Is there a role for uh, like emergency management you know, in, the, in the event of something bad happening and you need to... We have a backup generator at the fire department that powers the fire department. Okay. I, um, I just didn't and know that have, supplementary. We or... have um, a generator on our rescue and then we have small generators, portable generators okay. as that, well. That makes sense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it would, it's not like it would be the only piece on the, of equipment on the department. The generator so. on the truck, does that run off the PTO or does it run off a separate motor? It would have been a hydraulic generator. So one of the trucks right here in good shape. Right, mm -hmm. right. But they're basically saying it's a fifteen to twenty thousand dollar item that you don't need. Yeah. So we're like, fair enough. We'll drop that off. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, <clears throat> so that is going to the prices without generator. So you see, there's a range of from five hundred thirty to five hundred sixty-five thousand dollars for a truck. So what we did is we took that top end five sixty-five. We estimated that. Um, we'll probably run that bill up a little bit more with the small ticket items that we haven't spec yet. So we added twenty thousand dollars for that. Made it so it's five eighty five. The department, our truck fund, our capital replacement fund that we have been building up, we figure we can use fifty to sixty thousand dollars of that fund to kick in to help this. So <clears throat> that'd be about ten percent. That drops our request for a bond to um, $527,000 for the replacement of our, our frontline engine. Are all these the same chassis? They are basically the same truck. Um, What's the manufacturer of the motor and the chassis? We didn't specify um, the motors per se. We said we want 450 horse. Yeah. Um, what we have is we have the manufacturers are in parentheses. E1 is the chassis manufacturer for one. Spartan is another. HME is the third. And Toyn custom builds the, the back half of the bodies, but they do it on a Spartan chassis. And the fifth one that I requested was a, a engine manufacturer called Pearson. Yeah. Um, so but going back to your, your the engine question, um, we did spec out the 450. And right. I think a couple of them, or at least one, came through as a 400. And they're, without pulling them out and looking at them, I'm going to say probably three out of the four of those are Cummings engines. And then I also gave you a page <clears throat> where I found some time to talk to Diane today in regards to what would this look like as far as a bomb? Um, what effect would it have for the, um, co with what we have for a grand list in town right now? Um, and she suggested um, a longer term. So I put annual repayment of the bond, assuming 4% interest, which is what Diane suggested, yeah. um, and came out with some rough numbers here. Um, Annual payment on 20 years would be a $39,000 payment a year. If you do 10 years, it'd be $65,000 a year. And the total, including repayment, including interest, is the second line. Um, the effect that would have on a $200,000 property is on the bottom. If you do 10 years, it's $12.74 total per $200,000 uh, house. On a 200000 per $200,000 house for a year. Right. And if you do 20 years, it's seven dollars and sixty-two cents. Um, that being said, the 
this is the, the funds we're requesting as far as the repayment terms and so on and so forth. That's not really our wheelhouse. That's, you know, more goes into your side. So um, this is, and I have some backup information if anybody cares to look at it. I have the bids, or not, they're not bids, but I have the estimates here if people really want to see them and such. So what are you doing? So, I might have missed that, but what's, what are you doing with the 93 that you're replacing? What is the 93, a well, in or, an engine typically has a 20 year lifespan, typically just, they nationally they've gone to like a quality standard, like is this truck working still or is it not? But typically it's like a 20 year lifespan for a truck, you know, 93, it's 26, 27 years old right now. So we're beyond that lifespan right now. Um, our other truck is an 89, it's older. Um, the um, 93, there is a used market for trucks, but it is flooded with old engines. Could we get anything for it? Maybe ten or fifteen thousand dollars, and of course that could go into reducing the bond. Of course, mm -hmm. um, but I wouldn't really hold my breath for much at all. So um, selling it out bond the or bank loan. Bond. Bond. <laughs> so what would you guys? I'm just curious what you guys would be doing with it. Say again. Yeah. I'm just curious what you guys would be doing with it. Yeah, we would not be wanting to keep it in our inventory. So. And the bond, you would have the bond bank and fees, and that's about ten thousand dollars. In fees. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Is twenty years the longest you would go on the bond? I would think. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah I mean, bonds obviously can go thirty or forty years, but but in this instance, yeah. the, the truck. And as I mentioned, the truck. lifespan of a mm -hmm. of a frontline engine is twenty to twenty five years. Mm -hmm. uh, we are. We requested stainless steel body on the truck, mm -hmm. which according to manufacturers really gives us that 20, 25 year lifespan. An aluminum body would be a little bit less, but you would come into after 15 years or so, you would start to be seeing that maintenance start to jack up to maintain, to mm -hmm. basically refurb that body. So. so I don't know fire trucks or anything like that. I mean, I don't even know what you spend. Like, what they must range dramatically in price, right? They do. Um, I, I talked to one of these manufacturers to start with and said, for this, the we're using what's something that's called a custom chassis, which is the which is the fire trucks you're used to seeing that we have. They they they're that flat nose cab forward design, rather than something like a, a Kenworth tractor trailer. You know those are called commercials. A um, custom engine gives us a shorter wheelbase, better turn radius, a better ability to get to some of these tighter driveways that we have in town. Um, the cost, of course, it's going to be higher than the commercial, but the commercial engine, the commercial chassis, cabs and chassis, one of the manufacturers noted, often lasts about 15 years and then it just goes downhill mm -hmm. rather than 20 to 25 years. Um, for a custom, one of the, one of the people I spoke to had mentioned he's seeing price ranges bottom end on a custom about 450 right now, top end 700 um, for an engine right now. Yeah. I don't think they'd give you a bond for a fire truck. You don't think so? No, this is a vehicle. Really? Yeah. Uh, didn't we bond the rescue? Yeah. That's yeah. Understanding. Yeah, that was your standing. Our last time we actually went to the town. Or was it a bank loan? I believe it was a bond. When was that? 2003. The last time that we went in front of the select board requesting funds for a new apparatus was in 2003 for the rescue. And it was an eight year, my recollection is it was an eight year repaid bond um, that the town requested. Uh, the 93 engine that we're looking at replacing now was purchased new by our department and Nick you might be able to inform us better on that I wasn't around that back then um, that financial end on it I don't really remember unless I went back to the 
back to the, the votes of the votes. But it might have been. It was Dana, a special article been, that we came to requesting a certain amount of money for. Our I think my only question is, that my personal opinion, I don't think a bond is the way to go. Okay. Um, what am, oh, why is that? Um, well, if you have a 20-year bond, I don't. The town is going to have to pledge something other than a fire truck. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure. Again, I'm not. Mm -hmm. um, it's going to cost you automatically ten thousand dollars out of the gate. Mm -hmm. um, it's going to be a long process because there's a procedure you have to go to, and I can't <laughs> word it to you right we now. Like, but like sell the bonds and, yeah, and, 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 that, the and that type of thing. Um, and so I'm just trying to see in the 92 I think it'll be in the transaction. Though, yeah. It's a 4% bond, and that would, the fees would be good. If you did this, it'd probably be a lower I mean, rate. I don't think there's a problem with getting the financing. I'm just to saying the that the right. bond is. And so I can so call the bank tomorrow, because I have somebody that does that. Right, that's what I think that's all I'm saying. interest on that new truck? 2.05. Mm -hmm. I believe the article was in the 91 book. Okay, all right, well, in 91? Okay, yeah. well, that was, that was an eight-year... Loan, mm -hmm. I believe. Either an eight or a nine. Something like yeah. that. Okay, I'll I'll take a take a look at mm -hmm. that. When do you need to answer on this? If it has to go in front of the town for a vote, we are we are up against a deadline. Um, Which to, is to get in the deadline, we have to have the posting done by the twenty fifth, and. Um, unless you put it off, I mean, I know you need this a piece of equipment like now, but if it went to the August vote, with the, the uh, partisan primaries, we, yeah. have, we have another vote that happens in okay. August. Um, Why I'm, I'm, I'm just <clears throat> hating to rush into something. I, I totally understand. Um, that. Absolutely, the the build that may not be the best deal for you. The build for a truck. Once we sign a contract, is typically 12 months. You're out. Right. Yep. Um, yeah. the, our, our process to do the spec and to send out the RFP, we've been through this before, Nate. Four or five months. Yeah, it's a couple months process. Yeah, it's going to be a couple months for us to work on the spec, and then we've got to spend, send out an RFP. So, you know, if that's three, four months right there, um, you could uh, if could we I guess the question is could, could we put this off another six months and um, I think we could we, we were hoping not to that's why we're here but, tonight yeah. and I was thinking if you were to put something in requiring asking the money and of course in there you're going to say there will be financing um, do you have to specify exactly what the financing is pending um, approval that, that it, or if it's a bond that it, it would be offset. Yeah. The bond is a whole yeah. That's yeah. a separate. That's, that's a separate vote anyway. So if we just did that, like a special appropriation, you mean, or like or, or a special authorization on the town meeting ballot? Is that what you mean? To to go forward and with an offset of a loan. It may have been written in such a way shall the town appropriate so much funds towards the girl and volunteer fire department for a truck. Yeah, 92, I do have that actually. By means of a loan or a bond. And it was great because Dorothy used to write it in all right here. Yeah, I saw oh, that. Yeah. <laughs> such a beautiful handwriting. Well, I didn't mean that one, but yeah. uh, did, I mean, did I say 91? You said, not, yeah. You said, is there another one? That was, the, that was a, no, for the, for the 93 engine, it was a special handwritten article because it was the August meeting. The okay. town appropriated I don't know how much money. Right. I didn't realize so it was going to be This is two hundred thousand for a payable paper. within yeah. eight years. Yeah, because we had we had one in the in the ninety one, ninety two time frame and then we had our two thousand three truck which would have been two thousand one, two thousand two time frame. So and um, so to appropriate the money for the Berlin Volunteer Fire Department and further authorize the, the select board to borrow money and issue notes for payment of such appropriation as long as such notes become due and payable within eight years. Uh, the note to be determined by Australian ballot. I believe that was the 2003 <coughs> truck, right? And that was 92. Was that 92? Okay. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I think that's open enough. Yeah. I mean, you know, I'm just trying not to paint you in the corner. 
I mean, um, but payable within eight years. The five hundred and thirty-five. Are you well, talking you could, about that one? Well, so we, we just we just increase that number, right? That's what I was thinking. Increase the number instead of eight years. Go just a bit yes. higher. Yeah, given the truck is more expensive right. now than it was then. Mm -hmm. So you're looking for a regular loan then? Uh, well, it, yeah. But this leaves us open to, <coughs> to go. I mean, I mean, we would still technically have to go and have a vote on a bond, but we right. would have the option, the select board would have the option mm -hmm. of making that choice at some later point. Right. Um, I think that the other thing that we could do, which I don't know if we've done before, um, we could just put up like an item in the budget, right, for what the anticipated annual payments would be. And mm -hmm. just start paying for it straight out of the budget, or would we have to go through this? You would have to <gasps> appropriate the entire amount because they're going to need That's five hundred right. something thousand mm -hmm. to buy we're this truck. We're on the truck. hook for that, right? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Regardless of what way we go, we're on the yeah, hook. We take for forty thousand for it. Yeah, okay. there, there is a, a method out there that uh, I know Woodbury Fire Department has actually leased a truck before. Um, do you know if Paul spec that? Um, I really don't know enough about the leasing option. I know that I know the chief of Woodbury um, He could inform me more, but there is a leasing <coughs> option for vehicles available um, You know what the term lease would be? I do not Because I mean this The only would, trouble with the lease is somebody's making money on somebody yeah. else's interest. True This wouldn't affect this year's rate The other one for our rescue, I believe, was 2000 if, you, if that's one of the books you Yeah, I didn't out. grab that one. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I'll look that up. So you can set this off till uh, August for the confirmation. You the confirmation? I mean, um, that's, what, that's what I had asked, but he says it's a year's lag. Probably more than a year's lag. More than a year's mm -hmm. lag. Well, because it's yeah. going to take them a couple months to RFP to get the actual solid quotes, right? Right. Mm -hmm. And then once they put the order in, then it's going to be another year before they actually pull, uh, before they actually re receive the truck. Mm -hmm. is, that, is that accurate? Yes. Mm -hmm. and we know, we know, you know, first we have to wait for the town meeting vote, but also yeah. we have to wait till the July 1st. Right, you know, at the very least, we need to wait for July 1st anyway for, to proceed with anything um, for, for ordering, you know, for ordering something. Um, we would go ahead now and start detail specking this so we would be ready. But, um, How, so it, in all reality, would it only put you about a month behind? Because couldn't you send out an RFP if we did the vote in August? In we July? could. I mean, we could, as long as it's approved. If it, if it's approved in August, yeah. we could. It would probably only set us back about four months, and if three, four months, then I would think. Which do we have to wait for after a vote? Do we have to wait thirty days or something for somebody to for for review the vote rescission of for the appeal? Vote? Yeah. Is it also likely these numbers will go up over time? <clears throat> these based on what you've been quoted for the year two thousand twenty. These are. The applicable estimates, if we are into 2021, they're going to go up again. Mm -hmm. What was the price difference for Waterbury when they went from last year to Do this you remember year? the number? It was a $25,000 jump. If they bought a truck on December 31st, it was a set price. January 1st, it was $25,000 more. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if we add 12 months for a build, there's once more for another price increase. Mm -hmm. Right, yeah, but, but the purchase would be, once we sign it, it's, yeah, that's it. The done deal. Yeah. But I mean, the, right now the manufacturers are looking at tariffs and problems with importing materials, and and they're anticipating some of that going on. If they're building something or anticipating building something 12 months from now, they're anticipating some issues with materials and that sort of stuff as well. So, so, Danny, you're still thinking it'd be better to, to sit on it until August. Well, I just, you know, I don't like to rush into things, and I'm thinking that I would like to sit down with Diane and have us do a little research of, of what would the best financing option would be. Um, Can you folks get a little firmer price on, on uh, what the cost would cost? These are pretty firm prices from three of the four people. 
um, they they went through their their bidding software with what we had. Uh, the ne only next firmer price we could do is complete our spec and send it out. Um, the um, the I was going to say. Um, yeah, because a few of them were asking me, you know, are you ready to purchase down? I said, nope, I need an estimate right now. <laughs> That's kind <laughs> you know? of what I was wondering is um, if there was an agreement to make a decision by a certain date, if they might be willing no, to shut I have no, I have no agreements with anybody for trucks at this time. So, I mean, When we order a town truck or a police cruiser, those are all spec'd out when we get our pricing mm -hmm. right and yep. everything. So yeah, we put the RFPs, RFPs in. I mean, I think yep. it, would, it would be good for us to have that knowledge. Mm -hmm. would, do you think you would have the information that would make you feel better by next week? Well, I mean, if we, if you had a, a putting a, a an article on your warning mm -hmm. now for the total amount with some wording that the lawyer would bet. Mm -hmm. However, that looks like the select board will be getting funding of some sort. Um, if you decided that the bond was the best method, it would have to go back to the voters because right. they would have to vote on the actual bond. Um, and we would have a lot of lag time getting all these requirements filled if, and, and I feel, this is just me speaking, that uh, the bond bank would be hesitant to loan you money on a truck. Now, I can call the bond bank and, mm -hmm. and find out, but... Um, uh, I can call the bank because you know, they're... Incorrect. But we do have relationships with banks, and they do we'll must give people. loans on fire trucks. <laughs> Set on 500,000. You enough. know, so... But, but if we could, I mean, if those answers are easy enough to get, could we have a, a special meeting next Thursday and mm -hmm. come back and put that on the agenda and still be? If you're more comfortable with waiting until August to get this stuff nailed down, you know, this, it's a 27-year-old truck. We were supposed to replace it seven years ago. What's a few more months for us? Yeah. Um, I would... And if I'm reading it right, if the vote happened in August, we could still order it in 2020, right? Yep. If the vote yes. were to happen in August. Yes. It, since we have to wait, even if the vote goes through in March, we have to wait till July to do anything. Right. It's not really pushing us back huge yeah. amounts here. So, so and I guess what I didn't know is that the complexity of the questions that you, that uh, Diane and Dana, you feel that you would need to have answered if we if we need to do that. I'd be willing to meet next week if it means also being able to move it forward with the current pricing as opposed to going up against higher pricing later. This is using this year's pricing, right. the higher pricing. Oh, it um, is? Okay. It is using the higher pricing. Okay. It's not using 2019's okay. pricing, it's okay. using Very 2020's. Good. So you're, you're so. thinking that this price is somewhat close in mm -hmm. August. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, Okay. I guess my suggestion would be to wait till August rather than, um, and I don't mean to hold up their truck, that's not what I'm saying. I'm mm -hmm. saying that we'd have an opportunity, Diane and I, with what the best yeah. financing would be. They have a chance to get a little and, bit. Uh, and maybe you can fine tune what you need to fine tune. We would be fine tuning. Um, and know what yep. your add ons are. I know you've been looked at those. So if, if we don't put it on the town meeting ballot, which, which would be nice, is I think the, the, amount, of, the amount of turnout. For that, that election is going to be better than in August. Um, do we want to put an advisory item just to get like a the temperature of the mm -hmm. the sentiment of the town? That's a great idea. Or, or is that if, yeah, counterproductive? If, if you did August, I think that the advisory is a good idea. I think people, most people, are going to vote for fire trucks, but um, I think it's good to let people know what's coming up and what they can expect. And, and why you need it, mm -hmm. and or or maybe you know warn it for the floor meeting or something so there can be a bit of discussion. I was thinking a bit of discussion and some presentation. And We'd I think be happy the town to would that. be very yeah. receptive to We'd that. We'd be happy to do that. Yeah. So maybe that would be a good thing for the town meeting as a non-dollar amount presentation, yeah. right. and then with the idea that it's going to be in the August ballot. Correct. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, for. 
you know, back in October, we had presented the um, basically the status list of how our vehicles are doing. Um, and back at that time, you know, we've got we've got two main engines. We've got engine one, engine two. One engine's in Riverton, one's up here, and then we switch them back and forth. Um, engine two is the 1989 engine, and you recall back in October, we actually put that one offline, non-responding due to its condition. We have not brought it back um, into a responding status right now. And we have been looking for a used truck to replace it. Um, <clears throat> it's, we, we saw a couple that were good. We went, we visited one in not, when October or so. We visited one down in Pennsylvania. Um, wasn't right for us and we didn't make an offer on it. Um, <clears throat> we actually, I got notification from one of these uh, people that I've been working with, because um, he also deals in used trucks, that there's another truck that's come up that looks really good and it's about 150 on the list right now um, for replacing engine two. The year of that truck is a 2008. Um, what that would do is we're looking somewhere in that time frame. What that would do is that would help stagger the ages of our trucks so we can re be replacing these trucks at a more even time frame rather than saying we need two right now by the way you know um, so we don't have to be hitting you hard each time um, <clears throat> the the funding that we're looking at for that is we have been discussing with is it USDA <laughs> The USDA. We've been we've been yeah. talking with the USDA about low interest loans and being able to fund that ourselves. We would basically put that loan into our budget. The capital replacement fund we have at this time is sufficient to carry those payments for a year, year and a half, and um, then we would work it into our our regular budget. And at the same time that note we have for our air pack, our breathing apparatus. I don't know exactly when it's going to be completed, but it's going to be completed relatively, saying I think about two years out. Um, so that'll free up some funds for us to pay off um, financing a used engine ourselves. So, and that's our goal is to basically replace engine two this year with a with a used truck at around a somewhere around 12 13 years old and then get a new engine for engine one in this time frame engine one is an engine that the new one will last us 20 25 years um, and that will help stagger our engines okay if I mean if if the board thinks, I think August is a good idea. I mean, it's really like he says a month. Um, we have to remember we're talking about July first here, so yeah, come right. yeah. Does. So can we? Um, uh, are we approving the the warning tonight? Yes, I hope you are. So maybe we can. Um, uh, amend that to add a specific discussion item for the floor meeting? Yes. Do that? Okay. Um, I may need to not have you approve it tonight, but if you could meet next week and early in the week would be great so that we can have this ready for the town report. Mm -hmm. I can and I'll meet. have to tell Corinne. I can Corinne meet early next week. <laughs> <laughs> I could do, I could do Monday. Monday's fine. Okay, Monday is um, the date is the twentieth. Mm -hmm. Angelina, does Monday the twentieth work for you? Uh, it should be fine. Okay. Um, what time is the earliest that the board could meet? Eight a.m. <laughs> I could I could I could meet at eight a.m. <laughs> I could do four, it would require some juggling, but 
I, I mean, I, I don't know what your schedules are. I think the earliest I could be is 4.30. That's fine. I'm just, mm -hmm. I'm just mm -hmm. saying, you know, 5 o'clock, Brad, is that four? Four Four is possible. <laughs> I just need to do a little finagling. I don't well, want you to have to finagle. When everybody wants to meet, I'll take in. I can always leave work early. We're not real busy right now. Also, I mean, it's going to be a short meeting, presumably. You can also find right. it. Mm -hmm. We can do 5. I mean, I'm, I just thought it would be better than waiting till 7. Five works. Yeah. Five good for you, Angelina? Five o'clock. Yep, five o'clock on Monday. Yep. So I will write a something to non dollar amount. Mm -hmm. And I'll send it to you so you can see if it sounds okay. Good. And you guys will be there anyway, so yeah. <laughs> for by, by town meeting. For town meeting, we will, we will be there anyways. Yeah. Well, okay, well, thank you folks very much. Thank, thank you very much. much. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> okay, Dana, a letter from Sister Lauren Sieber. Yes, yeah, Sister oh, Sieber is interested in being appointed to the Conservation oh. Commission. I move that we appoint Sister Lauren Sieber to the Conservation Commission. And I second the motion. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion Aye. carries. Um, okay, approval of licenses, permits, vouchers, and applications. I make the motion that we approve the general funds accounts payable warrant number 20G13 with checks 19890 to 19928 in the amount of $44,090.02, payroll warrant number 20-14 for payroll, payroll from December 22, 2019 to January 4, 2020 in the amount of $45,967.02. Also reconciled December bank statements for the general fund, sewer commission, and water division, and general journal entries and right, tax so administration adjustments for December 2019. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Um, when did you want to do your additionals, Dana? Um, whenever. You would like two hundred fifty dollars, Diane. The difference. Yeah. So we're putting off the approval of the town meeting warning. Yes. Um, approval of the select board report. Yes. Let me get myself organized. I'm sorry. I'm a little as sixes and sevens here. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> Um, yes, the select board report, it's a report much like you do every year, and it has been updated, and I am looking for your input if you'd like to improve it, or if you would... You put new numbers in it, right? I did. Okay. I did. And I will have Diane check the numbers <laughs> prior to <laughs> giving it to Corinne. Yeah. <laughs> so I move to approve the select board report as presented. And I second the motion. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion Aye. carries. Aye. Okay. Um, Not the next time. Street? Yes, um, Down Street is going to be at your next meeting. As you remember, they were here on the 19th of December and they've been discussing um, their project and they have a draft letter of an MOU that they would like the town to consider. Um, you haven't seen it yet because I am revising it. Um, and so I'm going to finish that 
send it to you and so you'll have a chance to look at it before next meeting okay um and what they're asking i just want to tell you what the items that they're looking for the towns are part of the responsibility um they're asking bless to you. secure the bless you the new town center state designation for the area encompassing the project and include the property in any capital improvements or capital planning for improvements within the new town center. I don't see a problem with that. Uh, ensure the availability of municipal water and sewer. I don't have, Tom has allocation and that's not an issue. Um, they are asking for the town to endeavor to secure public ownership or public <coughs> access for the mall road. In other words, have the town accept that road. So they're not, this is not a, they just says endeavor is the word. Um, and I'm not sure if that's the word I'm gonna leave there, but um, they're also talking about funding for resources outside of the project. So that would be funding, I think they're talking about is like the TIF district or something like that. Um, Support and cooperate with developers in good faith during the zonal zoning approval process, etc. And I think we do that anyway. Um, the large thing, one thing they're asking for is the funding for this will is a block grant which a town has to manage, mm -hmm. and so that would be you mm -hmm. or me um, or Diane, even better. Um, they want to you to support an application for the uh, stabilization the tax stabilization which you can't do that because there's a process that so that's one that's thing true. changed but i just wanted you to know kind of what things it is it's not anything shocking and with an mou if you write it right it's not all that do we have any block grants present? uh no we don't have I a community block so. grant yeah. i didn't think so right So anyway, I just wanted you to know that was coming up. Thank you. And the, um, I had the ordinance that I needed you to. Wastewater ordinance, yes. Yeah, sign. I think the dog got me all upset. <laughs> I'll sign that and I can actually get these kiddos home. Have a good evening. Perfect. <laughs> Have a good night, everybody. Thank yep. you very you much. You as well. Check those to make sure we have them. Yes, because we could have missed them. <laughs> That's easy to do. There's it so is many. so easy to do. Yeah. Justin found a couple of So we got so down many. street water or do it every time. We um, do, no matter how hard we try. Yeah. Okay, great. <laughs> Let's see, uh, approval of uh, select board minutes for the January 2nd meeting. Yep. I make the motion that we approve the select board minutes for January 20th, 2020. As yep, presented. Second. second. Oh, it's not in the 10 minutes. Uh, Angelina was. Need a second. Aye. Aye, second. Okay. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Those in favor, Angelina? Aye. Motion carries. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Um, budget? We already did that. <laughs> no, I think you, have, you haven't approved it yet, though. Do you, you haven't approved it yet. No, that you, that's what we're looking for you to approve. And the total amount is $3,235,181. Is Did I hear you?
here you correct it was three million two hundred and thirty five one hundred and eighty one. Yep, yeah. and that's I make the motion that we approve the budget as presented in the amount of three million two hundred and thirty five thousand one hundred and eighty one dollars. Yeah. I'll second the motion. Any further discussion? Thank you. Hearing none, those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Um, let's see here. So we've got the budget, the ordinance, wastewater. Um, uh, let's see here. Town Administrator's Report, Dana. Yes. <laughs> right on time. Uh, Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you, Diane. Um, Thank you very back. On February 11th, over at the hospital in conference room one and two, um, the Vermont Department of Housing and Community Development, these are the folks that we got the grant for helping pay for the consultant for the new town center, will be having a ceremony um, to announce it and to do a little PR. So I'm hoping that maybe one or two or more of you could come to this. Um, I don't have the complete details. They've got the room is available from noon to 2 p.m. So it's noon and two. I would in a heartbeat, but I'll be in Chicago. I think I'll be in Las Vegas. So I won't be able to be there, but I what, would what if day? I was in town. It's the 11th. It's a Tuesday. Yep, I am. Can I go with you? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I would plan to attend. And, Thank and, you. Uh, and I think Carla is also planning to attend. Um, and, and the next item I have, and I know that you'll jump on this, the um, passive is looking for people to be nominated for their board, which is the insurance arm of the League of Cities and Towns. And so if you so desire, let me know. I'd be glad to nominate your names in there. That's all Does I it have. Does it have to be a select board member? Um, no, it doesn't, but <laughs> but in Berlin, I'm sure it, it really looks better if it is. <laughs> Anything else? No, that's all I have. Okay, thank you, Dana. Thank you, Dana. Uh, round table, Jer, uh, Justin? Yes. Um, I had an idea. I don't know if we talk about it at the round table or not. I don't think we need to vote on it, but it was the dedication of the annual... The, we had spoken about report. that, and Tim is retiring, mm -hmm. and we thought Tim would be a good idea, and Diana also recently retired. Mm -hmm. And so maybe we could do, yeah. dedicate... A combination. A combination to both of them. A yeah. mm -hmm. I think that would be nice. Um, it's been on my mind, too. Diana was with the town been. since 1998. Yeah, um, that's true. So she had 20 years mm -hmm. of, of service. Um, Tim has been with the town this latest about eight years, I believe, and then mm -hmm. he worked for the town prior. So yeah, he probably has that's 10 or 15 years anyway. Mm -hmm. yeah. And unless you can think of someone else to dedicate it to. Oh, I think they're both good choices. Yep. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah, you don't need a vote. It's, yeah, yeah, that's why I was just about right. to say that. Yeah. Are we having executive session tonight? Yes, we are. Okay. Um, I guess that's all I have for right now. Flo? I don't have anything for round table. Well, okay. And we have executive session? Yes. Is there a motion to come, go into executive session? I make the motion that we enter into executive session to discuss a personnel matter pursuant to 1 BSA section 313A2. Second the motion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. 